In the 20th century, scientists and engineers developed machines and systems that revolved around the analysis of frequency responses, or today known as the classical method. Although a resounding success at its time, the classical method was restrictive since it could not model a system that changes in respect to time. Thus paved the path of a new method that could accommodate for change in respect to time, which we call the time domain analysis. This method treats time as an independent variable in the analysis or measurement of time-dependent phenomena. One method that is based on the time domain analysis is the state-space representation, which will be the topic of this video. The state-space representation is a model that represents a system by its system variables, in addition to how the system would behave with respect to time. This method proved to be critical in engineering marvels such as rockets and aircrafts where processes such as payload monitoring and thruster control required a control system that could adapt to changes with respect to time. Let us now discuss the state-space representation itself. So what is the state-space representation? The state-space representation is a mathematical model for a system that consists of simultaneous first-order differential equations and an output equation. So generally, the state-space representation is shown as two equations. That being, first, the state equation being x dot equals to ax plus bu, and the output equation being y equals cx plus du. So, this state space equations, these can both be represented as a state space block diagram, as you've been taught before in signals and systems. So, what you see before you is the representation of a state space model in the form of a block diagram. So, before explaining the definition, we must first understand each part of the general state space equation. As I've said before, the state space representation is divided into two equations, namely the state equation and the output equation. The state equation has the differential equations and explains how the system changes with respect to time. Recall, we are talking about a model that revolves around the time domain analysis. The output equation is used to find particular values in the system from known variables in the state equation. The state diagram can then also be divided into two distinct parts to accommodate the definition of the state equation and the output equation. So let us first begin the definitions of each part of the state space representation from the symbol x. So the symbol x represents the state vector, which is a vector that contains the state variables in the system being x1, x2, all until xn, depending on the system. So, before we continue, it is important to know that these state variables are chosen within the representation and the modeling of the state space representation. There are two critical rules that must be fulfilled for a state variable to be a state variable. Those being the minimum set of linearly dependent variables such that if the value of the state variables at a particular time is known, the values of all system variables including state and non-state variables for all consequent time is defined. The state variables must then be able to be combined algebraically to each other to form any variables in the system as to describe them in consequent times. Next we can look at the symbol x dot, which is simply the derivatives of each state variable in respect to time. A cool way to represent the state variables in regard to the state space representation is this little Cartesian graph that we have that represents the vector properties of the state variables. So if we imagine two variables being x1 and x2 in an nth dimensional space with the state variables as the axis of said space, this space is named the state space. As an example, we can use a two dimensional space with the axis being x1 and x2. So a particular point in that space would result in a particular value of vector x and from the state equations we find a particular value of vector x dot. Following the value of x along t by equating the differential equation will result in a contour. Each point in this contour line along time t has a particular value of state variables such that this contour describes the changes of state variables along time t. If we look at the definition of the state variable, the proof of that definition can be seen by this observation. If the value of a state variable is known at a particular time, all consequent values of state variables along t will also be defined as seen in the contour. Now continuing with the symbol u, 
U represents the input or control vector. It provides the input control to change the path of the state variables along time t. This variable in particular is unique as it can't be represented as a linear combination of the state variable and acts as the control perimeter. And finally, the symbol y. y is the vector which contains the value that we wish to seek in a system. The values that we seek are the algebraic combinations of the state vectors and the input control vector. So co to connect these values together, we use the matrices A, B, C, and D. A is called the system matrix. It explains the relation between the state derivative vector and the state vectors. B is called the input matrix. It explains the relation between the state derivative vector and the input vector. C is called the output matrix. It explains the relation between the output vector and the state vector. And finally, D is called the feedforward matrix. It explains the relation between the output vector and the input vector. Now let's look back at the definition of the state space representation. The state space representation, as stated before, is a mathematical model for a system that contains simultaneous first order differential equations and an output equation. As an example, let's use a system which has three state variables x1, x2, x3, with the input variable being u1, assuming all variables in the matrices are real numbers. So, as we see, there are three simultaneous first order equations, which are x1 dot equals to a times x1 plus b times x2 plus c times x3 plus j times u1 and etc. These differential equations can be solved for all t after t0 if we know the value of u1 and the values of x1, x2, x3 at the time t0. Also, by solving the differential equation, we can find the value of x1t, x2t and x3t at all values where t is greater than t0 and we can find the values of y t at time t greater than t0 by simple calculations and mathematical modeling. So, you must be wondering how to choose the state variables. So, as stated before, there are two main critical prerequisites before determining a state variable. First one is a minimum number of state variables must be chosen that can describe the system completely. This rule says that for all variables available in the system, excluding the output, must be able to be described by the output equation, and as such, the state variables must be able to be linearly summed to form all variables in the system. Choosing the minimum number of state variables is simply to reduce calculation time and the complexity of the state space representation, because the addition of state variables beyond the minimum is redundant as they are linearly combinations of other state variables. Typically, the lowest number of state variables can coincides with the order of the system that is observed. Second, the components of the state variable must be linearly independent. Linearly independent variables are variables that cannot be described as a linear combination of other chosen variables. For example, x3 equals to 2 times x2 plus 3 times x1 is an example that x3 is not linearly independent to x1 and x2 because it is comprised of x1 and x2 algebraically. The state variables of a given system is not always unique. As long as the rules of choosing the state variables still apply, any variables chosen can be used as a state variable. The process of choosing the state variables will more so depend on intuition and ease of, pra of process rather than strict guidelines and processes. So let's move on to the modeling of a state space to transfer function and transfer function to state space. The state space representation can be transformed into this transfer function this can be done as this some form of analysis may be more intuitively reviewed through frequency response analysis. To transform a state space representation into a transfer function, we may follow the following steps. First, the state space representation into the frequency domain form. To switch the state space representation into the frequency domain, we can take the Laplace transform of both state equation and output equation. So we see that x of t is equals to a times x of t plus b times u of t becomes s times x of s which equals to a times x of s plus b times u of s due to Laplace transformation. As we see in the equation, the state equation turns into s times x of s is equal to a times x of s plus b times u of s. We can then see the same thing applied to the, the output equation where the Laplace transform changes from the function being in respect to t into respect of s. Next, we solve for x of s. To form the equation of a transfer function, 
we must create an equation that solves for y of s over u of s, representing the ratio between the input and the output of the system. So, we need to remove the x of s from the output equation to represent it independently. We can rearrange the state equation so that an equation may form s times x of s equals a times x of s plus b u of s, which then equals to s times i minus a times x of s equals to b u of s. This is done by simply moving the variables in question into the respective sides of the equation. We can then proceed to gain the value of x of s, which equals to s i minus a inverse times b u of s. Remember, this equation comprises of matrices, so we must abide by the rules of linear algebra, where matrices must abide by rules which say that the position of matrices must be maintained. And the addition of i being the matrix of singularity is simply so that we can calculate the s in the form of matrices. Next, we substitute x of s to the output function. Once we've obtained the value of x of s, we can simply obtain the value that we've been seeking into the output equation, resulting in the equation y of s equals to c times x of s times du of s. And remember the new value of x s that we've obtained earlier, y of s becomes c times s i minus a inverse times b of s plus d u s. The equation may be rearranged to solve y s over u of s, which then becomes simply c times s i minus a inverse times b plus d. Thus, we have obtained the transfer function that was originally a state space representation into a transfer function. We have discussed how we can change the state space representation into a transfer function. Let's discuss how we can change a transfer function to an existing state space representation. First, what we must do is inverse Laplace the existing transfer function. Let's assume we have a transfer function ys over us, which is equal to s minus a divided by bs cubed plus cs squared plus ds plus e. We then assume ys divided by rs is equal to s minus a, and rs over us is equal to 1 divided by bs cubed plus cs squared plus ds plus e. We then multiply each of these equations by the denominator so that there are no denominators left in these equations. Once we've done that, we can take the inverse Laplace of each equation, resulting in the equations y of t equals to r dot minus a times r, and b times r triple dot plus c times r double dot plus d times r dot plus e times r is equal to u of t. Next, we need to choose the state variable and the derivative of state variables that are involved in our new state space representation. The simplest method of choosing the state variable is by order of the differentials, where x1 is equal to r, x2 is equal to r dot, and x3 is equal to r double dot. The first state variable is r, the next is r dot, and etc. Next, we will define the derivatives of the state variables in the form of state variables and the input variable, where x1 dot is equal to r dot, x1 dot is equal to r double dot, and x3 dot is equal to 3 triple dot. But you will then notice that these are also corresponding towards the state variables that we have already made. Next, by solving the previous equations for r triple dot, we can find the third differential equation, which is r equals to u of t minus c times x3 plus d times x2 plus e times x1 divided by b. Now, we have a representation of the state variables and the derivative of the state variables. Next, we form the output equation that we need for the state space representation. The output equation is still in the form of a differential equation, but since we know the state variables used, we simply substitute the variables to form the equation, where yt is equals to xt minus a times x of 1. To form the general equation, we simply fill the matrices accordingly. Next, we form the state function. By knowing the differential equations, we can form the state equation by simply forming the state variables in the matrices. And therefore, we have completed in turning a transfer function into the state space representation to complete. And finally, we will talk about the stability of state space representations. Previously, you learned about how we can evaluate the stability using the Roth-Hurwitz method.
What's important to note from the Ruth Hurwitz method is that we take the denominator from the transfer function to evaluate a system stability, where the denominator is represented as R of S in the equation. So, since we already have an equation that we can use to represent said denominator, we simply must reiterate and rewrite the equation accordingly. As you see from the reiteration of the transfer function that we've already made, we see that the denominator is represented by the determinant of S i minus a. Simply, we take this as the transfer function that we can manipulate and use the Ruth Hurwitz method that you've already learned in the previous videos, and determine the stability from there. So, that's the general gist of the state space representation. In modern times, the state space equation method is used in a plethora of different fields and sciences because the ability to analyze a system that changes over time is paramount to the modeling of that system. Well, we hope you have learned something new, and remember that everything is under control.